not taking a class right now at Kenyatta, uh, you need to go in and make application to the college. Really easy, canadacollege.edu, make application, and then register for classes. Does anybody know why the bells are going? No. Okay. <laughs> the semester well, starts. Well, while we're unmuted, um, we're not recording. Oh, now yes, we're yes, recording. We are. Yes, we are. I did it. I'm really appreciating that. Thank you. The semester starts January the 19th. And um, I just want to say that everything will be online this next semester, as we have been this last semester. And so many times we, it's felt like, well, this discipline cannot be online. But I am so proud of all the professors in our program who have really made this switch. And many times students say it's really working. So uh, using Zoom classes, making videos, using PowerPoints, using a document camera. And sometimes students even say they can see better close up than they could in the classroom. So, uh, and many times, you know, there's some things that come up with tech. The educational program it, that we use is Canvas, but there is student assistance if you need help with the program, just like there's teacher help also. So we're going to hear from all the teachers today. I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce the instructors that are here. And I'll look up and just see your faces in the, on um, gallery view. I see Kathleen Morris, and next I see Judy Jackson, Linda Maynard, Edith Snyder, Peggy Perruccio, and I think that's all the teachers I see. But then let me also introduce the Dean of our division, Hyla Lacefield. Okay, thank you. We are not gonna take questions throughout this uh, session, but instead there is a chat. So if you look down at the bottom, you can put in questions. People are already doing that. And Peggy is going to uh, monitor that and for sometimes just go ahead and invite or uh, answer the questions right away. At the end, we could also have a few questions as long as it doesn't go on too long. But a really great thing is that you will get every teacher's email so afterwards, you can direct the questions to them and uh, really find out everything you want to know. <clears throat> so the first teacher that's going to be speaking is Linda Maynard. And Linda's going to be talking about Fashion 170, 173. So Fashion 170 is French pattern drafting. Fashion 173 is lingerie. And Fashion 169 is evening gown. Linda Mater is going to discuss this. Oh, lingerie, that's pretty. Oh, that's beautiful. Those are all pretty. Okay, in lingerie, um, it is a short class. It's a one unit class. And we will be learning lots of techniques that are not limited to lingerie. Uh, everybody will learn how to make panties and boy shorts and various other items of lingerie. You'll learn the finishes, how to apply lace. Uh, working with elastic, several different methods of that. So it's a very fun class. It's an eye-opening class and it's full of information. And that's what I have to say about lingerie. French pattern drafting, also known as moulage, is where you take a set of measurements, a set of measurements is taken of your body and you draft a basic pattern. It's a predecessor to a sloper or to the basic pattern, it will fit you like a dress form cover. In fact, you can use it as a dress form cover. Uh, it will fit you perfectly. And from that, you may be able to draft all of your patterns. From that, you'll draft a basic sloper and we will also cover basic sleeve. So you will have a full complement of patterns that fit your body exactly to use for pattern drafting for all your pattern drafting needs. And your clothes will fit. And the pictures you're seeing are from the evening gown class. Um, well, that's lingerie. Evening gown, we will be making a strapless gown that is supported by a fully boned facing that comes down past the waist. 
you'll learn various finishing techniques. You'll learn how to work with bias and charmeuse and chiffon and velvet. Um, this class is just, it's, it's a huge body of knowledge. It's, you'll learn lots of wonderful things that you can incorporate into your entire sewing life, all the projects that you make. Rhonda, that's my talk. Okay, thank you, Linda. The next instructor is um, <clears throat> Kathleen Lorist, and she's gonna be discussing uh, Fashion 100, Principles of Design, and Fashion 110, Beginning Clothing Construction. Kathleen. Thank you, Rhonda. Principles of Fashion Design is a course studying the principles, of course, and the elements to create an effective and a successful original garment design. The design analysis, the evaluation, and presentation, presentation techniques are practiced and will identify and analyze in depth each principle and each element. You'll be making boards somewhat like what you've seen on the screen. We will also be studying color theory. It will be analyzed and explored and practiced. And the class lectures, the evaluation sessions, the text and the assignments will enhance your creative skills for your own original garment designs. It's a three unit class and it's gonna meet on Thursdays at one o'clock via Zoom and Canvas. And now I'll tell you about Fashion 110. Rhonda teaches it on mm -hmm. Thursday mornings and I'll be teaching it Tuesday nights. Fashion 110 is beginning clothing construction and we teach the use of the sewing machine and all of its functions and parts. We, sew, we show you how to make a t-shirt, pajama pants, and reversible vest. Those are sewn throughout the semester to learn new construction techniques. Samples of new sewing techniques are demonstrated and sewn by the students. And the weekly samples are the building blocks for learning to construct a garment. The terminology for clothing construction is revealed as the semester progresses. And we look forward to seeing you there in class. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay, the next instructor is Peggy Peruccio, and she's gonna be discussing Fashion 123, Introduction to the Fashion Industry. Peggy. Thanks, Rhonda, I'm glad you're all here. So in Fashion 123, we're gonna be learning about the different types of businesses in the fashion industry. We'll hear from designers and others in the fashion industry and explore how they are making the shift to this current new way of doing business. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we have to be creative and flexible about how we do things. And this is also true in the fashion industry. I'm excited to explore these potentially new ways of doing business with you. And I hope that you will join me in Fashion 123. It's going to be three Friday, Saturday combinations starting in January. So it's six total days and then we're done for the semester. So I look forward to seeing some of you. Thanks. Edith Snyder, and she is teaching fashion merchandising, fashion 151. Edith, so yes. good to have you back. <laughs> yes, thank Ooh. you. Um, so fashion merchandising is basically understanding um, what you do with your great designs then. So let's say you have a great design, you know how to, to make it, but then um, how to go about manufacturing it or have a production going with it. That means you have to figure out costing and pricing. Um, you have to uh, figure out where you want to manufacture or produce it, by whom, um, how to ship it, like the whole logistics about it. We talk about quality control, uh, supply chain, importing, exporting, not only materials, but also finished garments. We talk about marketing, social media, um, e-commerce. Right now, I mean, before it was all wholesale and retail, and now we have the big thing about um, e-commerce, online shopping. Um, then um, throughout the whole semester, we will work on a final project. We will basically create a line and then walk it through every aspect uh, that is necessary to have something produced. And um, 
like in in a store. It's basically from the first idea up to the point where you can find your um, item in a store and every step in between. And that is uh, very important because very often people think like fashion design, this is kind of nice inventing something and maybe drawing it and then, you know, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> but there is a lot more to understand and prepare so that somebody can make it. So, and that's what we all cover throughout the semester um, with the example of one uh, like collection that you will create. So Great. thank you, Edith. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, Judy Jackson, would you please talk about draping fashion 168? Okay, so hi there. So I'm gonna be teaching draping on Monday afternoons. And uh, this is gonna be a, a fun challenge uh, because if it's one thing that you do need when you're draping, it's a dress form. Oh, and look at, ah, uh, there's some wonderful bustiers there that students were draping last time around. Oh, anyway, so there we, draping is the process of making a pattern three dimensionally on a dress form. And uh, so we start off three dimensionally and then we uh, turn it into a two dimensional pattern. Um, now, one of the things that I do wanna mention here though, is we wanna talk a little bit about the logistics of what this class is going to involve because you will need a dress form in order for this to happen. And some of, my, some of you I know have, uh, have taken my custom dress form class. And so you might have your own personal dress form. You may also have a, what we call a studio form like we have here in class uh, that you see in some of the pictures, the full size ones. Um, but if you don't have access to uh, a dress form, we're going to make it possible for you to borrow a dress form. And you'll see behind me a half scale dress form. I was just using it this morning in my flat pattern class at City College. And um, uh, we at, at Kenyatta, we have uh, half scale dress forms that are available for you to use. And what's, what's going to happen is have, there's electricians upstairs working. If you hear that banging, there's a lot of extra noise going on today. But anyway, <laughs> we'll get through this quickly. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it set up so that you will be able to check out the dress form through the bookstore. And you will have to return it you know, uh, at the end of the semester. You're going to take a credit card swipe. So if you don't return it, you're going to get charged for it. Um, plus, uh, but you'll be able to borrow a half scale dress form so that you can actually participate in the class and um, be able to learn about draping. Uh, so uh, I think it, it's a wonderful class and it, uh, it will complement your flat pattern work, of course, really beautifully. And I'm looking forward to giving it a try online. Thank you, Judy. So that was just an example of how this department has made it work for online instruction. So, you know, at the beginning we thought, oh, draping. No, unless the students are in the classroom and they're working with our dress forms, it just can't happen. But then we have a lot of, of half scale forms and it will be possible for you to borrow them through the bookstore and definitely return them. There's a big charge if you, if you don't. But see, that's how we've also made the other classes work. In our uh, clothing construction classes, we have a lot of samples. And normally we supply those in the classroom. But this time we have these things that you need for a course available through the bookstore. So for most of the, many of the classes at least, there's a packet that you purchase. Then you would have the textbook, the binder that's got so many of the samples or readers or that kind of thing in it. And sometimes it's small equipment for if it's a beginning class and we think they might not have, you know, a ripper and a seam gauge and scissors and things like that. And the fabrics that have been cut to make the samples that are required. And that can be shipped to somebody's front door. And because when we've got online instruction, we do have people taking these classes from Sacramento and Palm Springs and all over the state of California. So it can be shipped to your house or to save the cost, you can come by and pick it up at the bookstore. So for many classes that is, you know, it's required, but you get it all together in what, from one place 
the bookstore that has it put together. And Peggy has worked really closely with the bookstore and they will you know, make available even the tag board with the sloper on it, the, pa uh, the patterns for some of the, the uh, garments that we're making in classes. And it's really quite a deal. One-stop shopping, we make it work. Okay, so my classes that I teach are, are four different ones. The one that Kathleen talked about, Kathleen Loris talked about beginning clothing construction. And after that, many students go on into intermediate clothing, which is fashion 115. And that's offered on Wednesday night this semester. And it's uh, <clears throat> general fitting techniques because we're working with commercial patterns, but we learn to creatively adjust those and alter them to suit our lifestyles. Of course, there's people of all ages and all body types, but uh, you know we're just adjusting the commercial patterns so that they fit each person. We teach, uh, I teach a variety of seams and collars and sleeves and zippers in that class. There are many samples that go into the notebook. We make three garments for the class. The first class, the first garment is to make just a general shirt because in intermediate clothing, there are people that are pretty much still beginners and other people that have sewed all their life. And so it's kind of a class for anybody. And we start out, here's a shirt. This is the kind of shirt we, we all make to begin with. And that's the same shirt. But see how he adjusted it for the way he wants it? So the shirt can be just a shirt. It could be a jam. That's a shirt also. <laughs> it could be a jam top. It can be lengthened for a dress. Uh, it could be lengthened for a robe. It could be out of any fabric. And so that actually goes very, very fast to get us all on common ground. And then we go on to the garments that you want to make like dresses and shirts and blouses and jackets. So even this jacket was actually made in that class, um, not in tailoring, but uh, so all kinds of jackets are made. I use the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing as the textbook. I think it's absolutely a wonderful book. And as I said, most of the samples that are, most of the fabrics required for samples are available in that packet in the bookstore. The next class I'd like to talk about is Fashion 118 Flat Pattern, Beginning Flat Pattern. And that's Tuesday morning. You know, flat pattern, pattern making is really the most creative part of any kind of sewing. You get to understand really all about how patterns go together. It gives you a freedom to make choices as to which collar, which sleeves, or the details you want to put onto a garment. Even if you don't want to be a pattern maker in the future, you will be able to take commercial patterns and change them any way you want. And you won't buy so many patterns, actually. All you need is just a basic pattern that works for you, and then you'll just keep changing it. Nobody will know it's the same pattern that you're working with. In the beginning, we work with small patterns, half scale, quarter scale, and then we move on to full scale garments. And by the end of the class, you're able to make a complete original garment that um, you're very proud of. <clears throat> the tag board the sloper uh, for the sloper is available through the bookstore, the roll of pattern paper, the rulers you need. The textbook I use for that class is Principles of Flat Pattern by McDonald. And then I go on to the advanced flat pattern class, which is Fashion 162. And you do need to take the first class before <clears throat> this, this one. It's on Wednesday mornings. And here students are working completely in full scale for their drafts. Every week they're submitting uh, full scale, really just part of a garment. Not, you don't have to do a full garment every single week, but they get to try a lot of different sleeves, a lot of uh, colors and so on. And each student's doing a different one so that you get to learn the one you're showing to the class, but you get to learn from the ones that they have done at home also. You'll do two full scale garments that are complete runway ready. <laughs> and uh, you really have the chance to make some amazing creations. I sometimes say that many of the students that take both of these classes 
might even be better pattern makers than some of those that work for the big pattern companies. <laughs> I use the Armstrong book as a text for Fashion 162, Pattern Making for Fashion Design. And with those two textbooks, I think you really get the best of pattern making. So come along, I think you'll like it. <laughs>